Metal Volcano Tamer, what is this and how does this work? Hello to all the meeps and bubbles. Let me explain what I did here. Normally it can be totally fine to just slap a couple of steam turbines on top of a volcano and call it a day. Dump in a lot of water and it should work for most cases. But since you know me, I wanted to have this as tiny as possible. So this is only 9x9 tiles. And because I didn't want to present 6 different solutions for you, this is my kind of one for all metal volcano tamer. No niobium. So in order to get it this small, we had to sacrifice a little bit of efficiency. Normally you can just place down a couple of these steam turbines, make them self-cooled and then this is a very power positive process. But since we made this work for every other volcano type except for niobium and made this as small as it is, we need to cool it down with an aqua tuner. The aqua tuner then cools all the important parts like the steam turbine that should not overheat the conveyor loader that should also not overheat after picking up the material of 130 degrees. The material temperature is not the problem but the building itself produces heat and will overheat if not cooled down. We have also cooled the output material. I have added that after I posted a short because I wanted to test it and want to be really sure that this works. The material right now is at 4 degrees, so pretty cold. This should also explain why we have the liquids in the places they are. You can see the naphtha right here. Since this is a vacuum in this chamber up here, the naphtha is here to transfer the heat to the steam turbine as well as transfer the heat to the conveyor loader and transfer the heat to the metal tile that the material sits upon to cool down. I had naphtha here too but you can use any material that is dense and does not flash into gas at around 300 to 400 degrees celsius. That is why I used the nuclear waste here for a change. Nuclear waste has some very good thermal traits. For example, it is the second best coolant in the game, but it has a giant flaw. It becomes a solid at 27 degrees celsius. That's why I'm not using it here on the steam turbine. If you really want to use it there, be sure to set a sensor to 27 plus 14 degrees. You could also exchange both of these liquids for one liquid. I was just saving material here. We just got lucky and the volcano is erupting, the metal is falling down, being picked up by the auto sweeper, transported over to the automatic dispenser and dropped on the weight plate. This will start a part of the automation before it will eventually be picked up and transported outside of the room. The automation just says, is there any metal on this tile and is the liquid behind it cold enough? Then wait for a couple of seconds and send a signal for a couple of seconds to the auto sweeper. The auto sweeper then picks up the metal, places it in the conveyor loader and dumps it outside. So the automation is the following. We have the weight plate set to 10 kilograms which will send a signal as soon as some metal lands on top of it. Then it will get delayed by 30 seconds and send a signal for 10 seconds. This will then activate the auto sweeper for 10 seconds, but only if at the same time the thermal sensor is below 130 degrees celsius. But it needs to be below 130 degrees celsius for a time of 20 seconds. You could also change the buffer gate to 5 seconds and the filter gate to 5 seconds because I tested it for around 150 cycles and it still worked pretty fine. The liquid pipe thermo sensor is set to 7 degrees celsius. Why 7 degrees? Because I probably wanted to put in minus 7 and put it in wrong. At the moment we are using polluted water. Polluted water has the properties of freezing at minus 20.6 degrees celsius. Naphtha has the properties of being able to cool down to minus 50 degrees without freezing. If we go to the liquid pipe overlay, you can see that the water from the steam turbine just drops on top of the aqua tuner. The rest just loops around and is pretty self-explanatory. But a thing that is important though, the pipe piece behind this tile here needs to be a regular pipe piece. This one is made out of granite. And why is that the case? Because we want a slow heat transfer at this exact spot. If this pipe piece would be made out of aluminum and a metal tile too, the polluted water inside of the pipe would immediately flash into steam when picking up that large amount of refined metal at 130 degrees celsius. In this area right here we want the quicker heat transfer so that the metal tile is cooled down quickly as well as the heavy watt joint plate. This helps a lot when a large amount of material is dropped onto it. And this down here is just a regular if the water is too cold to feed into the aqua tuner, please bypass it with this bridge. What you might have seen in my builds is that I use a double bridge system like this. 
You connect up the white to the white and the green to the green and the system helps when filling the loop to not overfill it. You don't want to overfill it because it might accidentally stop. The reason for the gas bridge right here is because the liquid of the volcano is dropped at this exact tile and bridges transfer heat between their endpoints. This bridge right here lands directly on the temp shift plate. This helps out a little in a couple of the volcano types and will just melt down in the tungsten volcano and get picked up. No problem. In order to make this clearer to you guys I placed down 10 kilograms of water to the right, surrounded everything with insulation, put a bridge in the middle and now I'm dropping magma on the left. As you have seen the heat got instantly transferred from the left to the right via the bridge. As I explained I'm using this to already cool down the material while it is dropping, like in this gold volcano here. And why did I dip the automatic dispenser and the auto sweeper in liquid? I did that in order to cool it down. Well, cooling down is relative at these temperatures, we just don't want to reach the overheat temperature. So how else does the heat get handled? The steam is used in the turbine, the heat is converted to electric energy and it removes enough heat energy so that the metal will solidify, get picked up, transported to the automatic dispenser and dropped in the liquid which still has thermal contact to the steam. I guess you could also replace the heavy watt joint plate with the fancier ones, but not lead. So when do we finally get our material? As you can see we accumulated 16.1 tons of aluminum right here. The aluminum still needs to cool down until the thermal sensor reaches 130 degrees celsius. This can take a whole active and a whole dormancy period. Because when active heat will only get added and slowly drained and when in dormancy there's enough time, hopefully, for this to cool down. Some volcanoes have a very short dormancy period, like this aluminum volcano here. So in this example we only have around 7 cycles left for the liquid thermal sensor to cool down to 130 degrees celsius. So let's wait for that. We are already at 130 degrees celsius and now the automation switch to green. As you can see here, the material is being picked up and dropped at once. But wait, will this not break our pipes in there? because there are some radiant pipes flowing through there with cold water that could evaporate at any moment. Well, let's check this. This is already down to 80 degrees celsius and we only have 2.4 tons of aluminum there. Why is that? Well, we limited with our automation right here the output to a certain number of seconds. And then it checks for the temperature again. The temperature at the moment is 1 degree higher than before because our aqua tuner activated. And it activated because we needed to cool down the aluminum. So the system reset itself to not burn itself. Leave a like if this helped you understand this build better and a special thanks to my newest Patreon and of course my older ones. Now you can go and watch that randomly selected video.